These are creepy TikToks that will make you rethink your whole reality. Part two. First, Facebook knows every single website you visit, including all of the inappropriate ones. You can lie to anybody and clear your search history, but Facebook will always know what websites you visit. I don't understand why they do this, but they do, and it's extremely weird. There were witch tests that were given to the accused. If they failed, they were imprisoned or worse. One way they would see if you were a witch was the skin test, which wasn't much of a test. It just consisted of authorities looking over the accused to see if they had any moles, freckles, birthmarks, scars. Back in the day, this was proof that you were a witch. Imagine being thrown in jail because you got a mole or a freckle. I'm back, it's your boy F-I-T-C-I-T-E, and today we're looking at this compilation together. Your boy just got out of the gym, so you already know I'm pumped up. So we're gonna look at this compilation together, grab your ice cream, popcorn, whatever you want. Just make sure to subscribe and like the video so it gets pushed to way more people. The more people that like this video, I promise you, the more people will see the video. So let's try to get to like 100 likes, nothing crazy, I guess. Middle of the desert, and we look, and there's just like this staircase that goes to Nothing. nowhere. And like I see it and in Kim the middle of the desert. I see it and Kim sees it and we're both like, we get this really bad weird feeling and we're like, we need to go back and like find out what that is. It's like an eight mile city called Felicity and only a population of seven or something like that. There's, this is in Arizona? This yes. is in Arizona. And this really rich guy, He's a, what? He's a Rothschild. A Rothschild. Damn. He bought this town of Felicity and named it after his wife, Felicity. Wait, is this real? Who we yes. think we ran into. Can we make sure that this is real? They offer tours of this place. Oh, we did a tour. It was we did a tour. horrifying. Why? They tried to get us into this. They put us in this pyramid. <laughs> and they told made us, us to they, make a wish. They, 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 made, they made us try to get. They tried to get us in the center of the pyramid, in the center of the thing. Put our foot in the middle, save this thing, and make a wish, and then sign a contract. And I was mm -hmm. like, and we were like, I'm not doing that. And she was like, Well, it's the only part of the tour you have to do. And they go to do the tour. And that's when we said we don't want to do the tour anymore. We're gonna leave. And she was pissed. Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. I'd be like, Honestly, bro, you could stay mad, but I'm not doing that. That sounds like a, a ritual to me. Like, y'all not getting my soul. Hell no. Japanese Easter bullies experience a ghost a haunting at school. For carrying strange items inside his bag at school. However, the bullying wasn't an unusual occurrence in this school. There were many reports of victims being bullied. Some even going as far as to take their own lives because of it. Ah, that's far. Now, while they are inside the room, they hear an intense knocking on the door for a few moments before it stops. And then strange things begin to happen. I threw it out. He wants to come in. What's up with him? He wants to come in. What's up with him? He wants to come inside. Hey, wait a minute. You are so noisy. Wait, why are you making noise? Noisy. You're noisy. He's scary. He did it. He did it. Wait. Stop. Quit. What? What? They go outside to check the source of the banging after the door slammed so hard. But there was no one there. Shortly after, they capture something terrifying. Yes, he brought it. Very easy, like a child, right? Like a child, right? Like that? Not because of... Yo, these titles are too fast for me, my bad. Oh. oh! That's not funny. They return back inside the classroom oh, to check the guy's back, mm. and then blood suddenly starts to drip from the hand of the bully's leader. But they couldn't find the source. A few moments later, a creepy figure can be seen standing behind them. It is believed that this is the vengeful spirit of one of the students who lost her life to bully. Oh. Maybe that's why she is now tormenting these bullies. What the f is that? You know what was really funny in that? He was like, the bully leader. I was like, if you're watching this video and you're a bully leader, what are you doing with your life, bro? <laughs>
<laughs> my bad for those subtitle readings, bro. It was going so quick. It was like, pew, pew, pew. I was like, bro, I can't read that quick, bro. I'm not gonna lie, the guy watching on the security camera, wow. He was just there just like, oh, I just have my morning coffee. Look at this bozo about to fall off just recording it. Just like, <laughs> crazy. According to our daughter, we had two ghosts living in ghost? our last house. Is it a friendly ghost? I completely believe her. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. It's a That's because ghost? babies slash toddlers have no bias or filters. Okay. Their minds are completely open, and as a result, they're more likely to witness a spirit. Oh, just two. Okay. There were several times before she could talk that she would stare and point at the same empty corner of her room. Okay, so we don't need to be scared, right? This was the first time she said the wrong ghost, so I pulled out my phone to record. They were totally chill, so we weren't haunted or anything. We all just lived together. Yeah, yeah. The daddy ghost? And a mom goes. But you said they're nice. Right? So it's okay. We bought a new home about you two years ago. Scared, right? But I often so think about good? these two spirits and I hope they'll find okay. peace. Yeah, as I go down and down in the series, a lot of people have been saying that children can actually see possibly speak to spirits i don't know about um the facts on that but a lot of people have been saying that they can because i read do read some of you guys comments and you guys do say that children are more likely to see spirits man captures dicky dicky after staying in a japanese forest for losing penalty game for losing the penalty game to complete his penalty he had to enter the forest alone and record the entire thing from start to finish now for the most part of his stay in the forest, not much really happens. But comes night time, and that's when the Yurei come out, and he manages to capture something completely bone chilling. Watch closely. Oh, yeah. I can never be in that forest dark, bro. You're bugging. 17.01 a.m. How's that? 5 a.m.? It's already 17.10. 7 p.m.? What? <laughs> He said, huh? Eh? Huh? Oh, chow, 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 chow. Chow, chow. Eh? What is that? Huh? Dip, 
dip, dip, dip, dip, dip, dip, dip, dip, dip. Just dip. Huh? I said, huh? I told you to dip, dip. Oh. As he looks up from his phone and realizes how dark it's gotten, he notices what looks to be a female figure, or at least half of a figure, just crawling towards him in the midst of the forest, shrouded in darkness. Many people believe that this is Teke Teke. The ghost of a schoolgirl who is said to have fallen onto a railway line where her body was sliced in half. She is what we call an onryo or a vengeful spirit and is generally depicted to be wielding a scythe, attempting to cut her victims in half. Mm -mm, I'm not becoming a crawler, bro. Nah. Oh, I can see it. She's crawling her, her what way do you over. think of this capture? Is it real? Oh. Or is it just a hoax? You can judge. Look at her crawling, bro. If I'm being honest, she's so slow, I'll do the dash. I'm like, by the time she knows, she's not catching me. That's probably alligator speed if we're being honest. Would you go into that forest? Put that down in the comments. Okay. <laughs> Strong. Yeah. So this has been going on for the last 15 minutes. We were talking to the spirit, and I guess we gave it too much energy, and now things are getting worse. She too thinks I'm somehow messing with her, but we are so behind on closing. Like we have to still clean so much stuff. No. And they just won't stop. Like the spirits won't give us a break right now. Oh, it's, oh never mind. Okay, let's go. I, I'm, I'm literally out of breath. I'm so so nervous right now. Okay. So this is what we deal with here at Swirls. It's currently 11.18 and we're still not home. And okay, there was a sound right there and I guarantee I just saw a shadow. I hope I caught that. See? The lights are not making it any better too. Look at the lights, Uh. I don't get it. Is there a reason that you're doing this right now? Dude, the lights are just here. Like, okay. Right? Yeah, I'm this is our main panel. Okay, it stopped. Okay, okay, chill, chill. Okay, so this is what I <gasps> No way. Bro, like, I just caught that literally right in front of me. I literally just caught that in front of me. No one is here. Dude, I was just gonna relax. Just... <gasps> okay, 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 okay. Okay, come to the front, come to the front now. Come on. Yeah, you. <laughs> Okay. See, this is what I don't like. Just leave. I hear footsteps <laughs> from the attic right now. I'm literally still hearing it. I, I literally just saw a shadow. I'm not a shadow kidding. where? What's going on? Okay, now music's on. Nicole, come here. This is... Anybody there? Okay. Hey, no, they're saying juice roll is haunting them, bro. Get out of here. Okay, so this is what I mean. And I'm just... I don't understand this. I really don't. Oh my god. 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 Okay, we need to get the lights on. Please come with me. Please come with me. Please go to the switch. Go to the main panel. Just go to the main panel. Okay, turn them on. Turn them on. Turn them on. I hope that I wasn't trying to say Juice Roll was haunting them, but I'm gonna be honest. At least now they have an excuse to show their manager. Be like, bro, look what was happening last night. Manager be like, what the? They're like, okay, everyone gets a week off. My boy going against the werewolf again. Oh. Yeah, if that was me, I would have just. I don't even know. Imagine like a big werewolf creature attacking the elevator. Like, what would you even do? What could you even do? That's the real question. A patrolman at a Mexico City airport heard a mysterious banging coming from a seamlessly empty plane. 
What he discovered left him shaking for hours. Wow. Francisco had just finished a late night inspection. Francisco Hernandez, when he heard the noise around 3 a.m. Oh my. With only the flashlight on his phone to guide him. The 32 year old inspected the cabin to make sure there was no other people on board. Suddenly, a dark figure seemed to peer out at him from around a corner. Damn. I don't blame him, bro. I'd run to it, like, nah, you know what? The, he, they got the plane, bro. If they want to take the plane, they got it. Like, I'm out of there. Where is the sky? Let's see if the werewolf came back for bro. Quantum Never go into the woods and after this dark. This whole fucking person is sky. I remember Randonautica. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! That app was crazy. What if the person oh. shows up in my rear view camera? No, bitch, I can't. Uh uh. What the? Uh uh. Doesn't sound like someone is. Someone is. He said it almost sounds like someone is crying. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere by a lake. I'm not sure who or what it could be. Bro, hearing someone scream in the distance or just like scream around you is crazy. Mostly if you're in the woods, you're like, where is it coming from? Who's screaming? Wood screaming is crazy because someone could be getting killed right next to you and you don't even notice, bro. It would be crazy. Like you've maybe heard of Roanoke, it refers to this area and colony that completely vanished in 1590, ultimately making it one of the most mysterious mass disappearances in American history. The colony itself was established by Governor John White, but when John left in the late 1580s to go fetch supplies from England, he came back and found something shocking. He arrives back in Roanoke by 1590 and everyone is gone. All that was mm. left of the abandoned colony was the word Croatoan that was carved into a fence. Croatoan was the name of the Native American tribe that lived in Roanoke before the settlers stole it. So logically, we would assume they were responsible for the disappearance. But whatever really happened wasn't exactly adding up. No remains of those from the colony have ever been found. And even to this day, archaeologists have still yet to uncover any evidence of where all of those people went. In this mysterious conclusion, it would seem they simply vanished. They probably picked their bags up and just left. They're like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going across country. Imagine walking across country though. Shattered. Shattered is another humanoid creature created by Trevor Henderson. If you can't tell by now, I'm obsessed with Trevor Henderson creatures. He's said to be an extremely tall humanoid creature with pinkish reddish skin. And this is really disturbing, but his fingers are said to be six to eight inches long each. It's said that Shattered can be seen frequenting abandoned electrical services, and he loves electricity. Shattered is also extremely aggressive towards the camera, and he doesn't like people taking his photo, his video, or being stared <laughs> you can at. Tell why. As you can tell, in this caught on tape style footage, it looks like he's lunging towards the camera. <laughs> It's said that he likes to hang out at any place that has electricity, including houses. It's also said that if you have a power outage at 2.50 a.m., don't go outside to investigate because you might see Shattered outside waiting for his next victim. You have to wait until 2.58 a.m. and then you're okay to go investigate. Someone made this, I really like- You could tell why bro didn't like getting pictures taken of him. He was ugly as hell. Sometimes, you know, you're not feeling the camera, you know, you don't want- you're just like, get that- You know what I'm saying? So, understandable. Scary things in Facebook's terms and conditions you didn't know you agreed to, part two. <laughs> First, Facebook knows every single website you visit, including all of the inappropriate ones. <laughs> you can lie to anybody and clear your search history, but Facebook will always know what websites you visit. I don't understand why they do this, but they do and it's extremely weird. So next time you visit a dirty website, just remember Facebook knows exactly what you're looking at. Next up, Facebook has a map of your face. Facebook knows exactly what your face looks like, down to every single specific inch. Nah, that one's kind of weird. It's the reason Facebook is so accurate with suggested tags. And the reality of the situation is, 
Facebook probably knows your face more than you do. Nah, I had to laugh for a second. Bro said, including the dirty ones. I was like, what? <laughs> It's like he didn't even have to say that or and he didn't even have to say it like that. He could just been like, yeah, Facebook knows every single website you've been to. But that's crazy. Zuckerberg need to chill out. I wouldn't be surprised if he start cloning. Disturbing things caught at Disney parks. She's trying to distract people. From this. What the hell? It's like a jerking off. Keeps trying, but this audience will never <laughs> see what they. <laughs> Bro was beating his. Sh oh my god! <laughs> nah, this is not a creepy episode. This is a funny episode. I'm crying this episode. Hey, hey look, look a, a pizza. pizza! You gotta let, let him into your house, house now. <laughs> Bro, this man has been in probably 10 episodes now. I've seen this pizza guy at least 10 different times, bro. I promise you. Oh my gosh. Do you ever feel sometimes like you might be a witch or be a descendant of the Salem witches? Nah, if so, never. take this witch test and see. Yes, you heard me right. During the Salem witch trials, there were witch tests that were given to the accused. If they failed, they were imprisoned or worse. One way they would see if you were a witch was the skin test, which wasn't much of a test. It just consisted of authorities looking over the accused to see if they had any moles, freckles, birthmarks, scars. Back in the day, this was proof that you were a witch. Imagine being thrown in jail because you got a mole or a freckle. These people were unhinged. The next test was the prayer test, which accused were made to recite prayers or a selection of scripture from memory. If they made any kind of error while they were reciting, or heaven forbid forgot a part of the scripture, mm. we got a witch on our hands. Another terrifying exam was the swimming and dunking test. Accused witches were bound at the wrists and ankles and dropped into a body of water. If they floated, they were guilty. If they sank, they were innocent, but obviously no longer with us. And I saved the worst for last, which was the witch cake test. This was where an accused witch was forced to bake a cake with her own urine in it, what? and then forced to feed it to a dog. And if the dog had any adverse side effects after eating the cake, she was a witch. I told you, unhinged. I can only speak for myself here, but I wouldn't pass. I got quite a few freckles, and I've been known to forget some scripture now and then. If you want to hear more about these tests and all about the Salem Witch Trials, check out the most recent Avery After Dark podcast episode. I cover it all, as well as some haunted spots in Salem. Do you think that you would pass the witch test? Nah, that's wild. You have a freckle, you're a witch. You float, you're a witch. The dog gets a disease because your bacteria-filled urine, you're a witch. Bro, that's just setting you up to fail. Do you think you would pass? Put it down in the comments. These are some extremely unsettling facts. Part 30, and I found all of these on Reddit. Reddit. Now, I spoke to you guys prior about what the Russian dead hand actually was, but given current events, I feel like I should reiterate this. The Russian dead hand is effectively a rage quit button that Russia has installed. This will send rage nuclear quit. warheads wow. to hundreds of nations throughout the world. It's a very realistic end to society as we know it, but as of right now, we have no reason to believe that it will get to this point, so don't worry too much. Many fatal diseases actually have no symptoms and will randomly come about and kill you. You will be feeling amazing and healthy one day, and then all of a sudden, you will start to feel worse, you'll start to feel unhealthy, and eventually, you will die. But again, it's pretty rare, so don't worry too much. You guys, make sure to go check out my Instagram. I am answering some questions over there on my story. On average per year, chiropractors actually kill more people than sharks, and according to some studies, plane crashes as well. But these are also very rare instances and most chiropractors are trained very, very well in prestige in their craft, so don't even worry about it. And look, I know a lot of these are very scary and very real, especially given today's day and age, but that's why. I'm not gonna lie, death by chiropractor is almost as bad as death by Travis Scott concert. Yeah, just be careful of, of who cracks you, you know what I'm saying? Conspiracies are fun, and one of the most famous conspiracies is that the lunar landing was actually faked. Okay, but why would NASA do that? The space race we were going to be the first mm -hmm. country to put man on the moon way ahead of Russia and China. But if NASA didn't have the technology to get it done, they were going to concoct the most elaborate staged landing in history. So let's mm. look at some of the evidence here. One of the most common inconsistencies are the shadows. There's only one source of light on the moon, the sun, meaning the shadows would be going in the same direction. There's also a good number of photos where the crosshairs seem to be blocked by an object in the photo. This was also seen in a shot, a moon rock with a C on it, almost like it was a prop. The 
truthfully, a lot of this visual evidence is mostly debunked. I'm more interested in the tech that doesn't seem to add up here. The transmission delay was only about a half a second. Based on how far away they were, it was calculated that at minimum there would be a two second delay. That and all of the original tapes from NASA have been lost. I mean, he said lost. Yeah, they lost it now. They just chucked them files out. What do you think? Do you think they fake the space landing or do you think that was actually real? Because I know multiple people that say they faked it, multiple different people that say they didn't. It's just 50 50. So if you think it's real, put it down in the comments. If you think it's fake, put it down in the comments. I really want to know your opinion on this. This is a true horrifying story. Part 66. This story happened in the early 2000s. It was late at night. A woman was driving in an unfamiliar area. Her car was old and unreliable, and soon she realized that she had to make a stop for gas. Luckily, mm. she came across a gas station in a few minutes. The gas station was very old-fashioned, in the middle of nowhere. But something about this gas station seems very off. Afraid that she might not find another gas station close by, she reluctantly pulled up and she asked an attendant to fill up the tank. The attendant seemed really nervous as he was filling up the tank, but he finished his job. He then moved towards her car window for payment. She hands him the money. He carefully examined it and told her that the bill was a counterfeit or a fake. The attendant explained that he would have to take her back inside in what? order to call his manager about the counterfeit bill, as it had to be reported to the bank. She got convinced. She goes inside and sits down. The attendant walks towards the station gates and locks the mm. doors. He turns around and tells her, the bill is not a counterfeit. At this point, she froze, thinking she's about to get abused. He tells her this, I had to get you out of the car because there was a man with a hatchet hiding in the back seat. This kind of crime is very common in the West. It is terrifying to realize that you are driving down the highway for a whole hour with another person hiding in your car, waiting for the right moment. Mm -mm. For a sec, I thought that story was about to take a crazy turn. I thought he was gonna be like, yeah, bend that shit over, show it. but like, nah. That's crazy. You gotta be careful who's in your back seat. Every now and then, you know, you about to hop in the whip, just check like, yo, you know, yeah, just start straight, hop in, start driving, you know what I'm saying? That's the best way to avoid that, but, cause people are weird like that. They'll somehow find a way in your car, chill in your car until you get to your location and they start either robbing you or hatcheting you. Don't want that to happen. I don't want that to be you. So be careful, please. These are creepy TikToks that will make you rethink your whole reality. Forces live ammunition. Author of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, is said to have lost her virginity on top of her mother's grave. She also kept her dead husband's heart and carried it around for 30 years until her death in 1851. 75 Americans have died. He said, that's too many. And he signed that day a national security order ordering all troops out of Vietnam, U.S. troops. And then a, w a month later, he was killed. Joe Chris County 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yes, ma'am, I, I, um, I just shot my daughter and shot all my grandkids. And I'll be sitting on my step. And when you sit here, I'm gonna shoot myself. I'm back, it's your boy F-I-T-T-I-T-E, and today we're looking at this compilation together. So grab your water, your popcorn, your fruit snacks, whatever you want. Creepiest place in every state. Iowa, Stony Hollow Road. Known as the most haunted road in its state. Outside the city of Burlington lies a long stretch of gravel, which is known to be haunted by the ghost of a woman named Lucinda. It's said Lucinda. she jumped off a nearby cliff after her husband left her. Ever since that day, people claim to see her ghost on the side of the road. Legend says if you ever see her holding a rose, run. As if she lays the rose by your feet, it means your death is near. Would you want to visit? So Lucinda jumped off a cliff and expect me to go visit her? Hell no. If I see someone running towards me with a flower, best believe I'm running the complete opposite way. Either that or we're gonna have to fight. And you know, I'm not really feeling in the fighting mood today, so I'm gonna just have to run. Morbid facts, part 50. Actor Jake Lloyd played young Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. But at the age of 12, he retired from acting permanently due to bullying and Damn. destroyed all of his Star Wars memorabilia. 
Years later, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia after being involved in a high-speed car chase with police. In a Mexican prison in 2020, two rival drug cartels decided to put their differences aside and play a friendly soccer match. Somehow the game ended with 16 people dead. Mm. The first suicide hotline was started by a British priest named Chad Vera in 1953. He decided to start it after directing a funeral for a girl who took her own life when she had her first period. She thought she contracted an STD and had no one to talk to to reassure her that she was fine. Damn. In 2020, a Jesus statue in India had water mysteriously dripping from its toes. Worshippers flocked from all over to collect and even drink this miracle water. But soon enough, the source of the water was found to be a clogged toilet near the statue. Ew! Motherfuckers is really drinking clogged toilet water. That's absolutely disgusting. And I low-key feel bad for the girl that died because she had her first bleeding situation. You know, if she had someone to talk to, I think she would still be alive to this day. Disturbing facts you wish you could unhear. Part 3. This video shows a man playing Dance Dance Revolution being recorded by some people making fun of him. Six months later, the man Adam Lanza would murder his mother, then drive to Sandy Hook Elementary where he would murder six adults and 20 children. A 46-year-old man found and attacked a 13-year-old boy because he was killing him too many times in a game of Call of Duty. There have been numerous cases of people's intestines being sucked out of them by vacuum toilets on airplanes. So if you want to keep your insides, make sure to stand up before flushing. Mm -mm. A man once donated his mother's deceased body for scientific research. He later discovered that the research facility sold her body to the US Army for $5,000 where they would blow it up with explosives. Yo, that's gotta be one of the most disrespectful things I heard all day. Bro said, you know, I'm gonna give my mom's body away to science, see if they can cure cancer, you know, some crazy disease that, you know, mankind might have. But instead, they sold it to the US military to perform explosion tests. And what's up with all these men killing children? Like, come on, bro. These are videos humans were never meant to see. Okay, so we all know about the ancient pyramids in Egypt, but have you ever seen what it looked like from the top? Probably not, but you're about to, and there's just something about it that's extremely unsettling. Hmm. Oh yeah, aliens definitely built that shit. <laughs> Do you think that? Okay, so there's only been a couple documented videos of people on top of the pyramids, and that is one of them. The pyramids have been around for 4,500 years, and the fact that they're still standing is just mind-blowing. But what's more mind-blowing is that somebody actually got to the top of it and gave us such a spectacular view. Some Egyptians back in the day definitely stood there at some point in their lives, and enjoy the same exact view just in a different world 4,500 years ago. So let me know if you would try and risk it and get to the top of the pyramids because this person did and got a once in a lifetime view that none of us will ever experience. All right, I got two questions for you, right? So would you climb to the top of a pyramid? Put that down in the comments. But also, do you believe that the pyramids were created by aliens? Or do you think that the ancient Egyptians were the ones to actually fully create all the pyramids? I know there's a lot of conspiracies around it. There's a lot of speculations. There's a lot of people like, first of all, aliens actually could not. First of all, the Egyptians, there's no way they could get. So like, what do you think? Put that down in the comments. I specifically want to know your opinion. Japanese yokai, kamikiri. The Barber Yokai. Kamikiri are small creatures with a scissor like beak and has hands like razors. They are small enough to sneak quietly through open windows and doors. The main goal of a kamikiri is to cut a person's hair off. They will hide under roof tiles and will wait for someone to pass by. Often, the victim is asleep in bed when the kamikiri attacks. In the olden days, they are feared because having long hair was the only fashion back then. But nowadays, with different hairstyles being popular, they are no longer feared. I mean, I have dreads. They're kind of long, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to take these hoes out soon, I'm not gonna lie. But I don't think you cut my hair off though. I'll dead ass like backhand him if you ever try to... I'm sleeping, you know, I'm just, I just see some sit, just, I'm like, what? Don't do that. I'm trying to cut my hair. I don't give a f that you look like a bird or an alien. Morbid facts. Part, part 47. 47. Bruce Lee's son, Brandon, was accidentally killed while filming for The Crow when he was only 28 years old. Mm -hmm. A prop gun was loaded improperly, causing dummy bullets to fire at him with the same force as live ammunition. Mm -hmm. Author of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, is said to have lost her virginity on top of her mother's grave. 
She also kept her dead husband's heart and carried it around for 30 years until her death in 1851. In 2014, Harvard University discovered that two books in their library were bound using human skin. One of the books is called Destinies of the Soul, and inside, the author left a note that read, A book about the human soul deserved to have a human covering. In 2015, a woman claimed that she could smell Parkinson's disease. To test this, doctors gave her 12 shirts to smell, and six of them were from Parkinson's patients. She correctly identified the six shirts, but also chose one from the control group. Eight months later, that person was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Damn, imagine being able to smell Parkinson's. That should be crazy. But nah, I'm coming for the girl that freaked on top of her mom's grave. That is crazy. You're bugging and I don't know what should happen to you, but like, that's crazy, bro. Why would you do that? So I've seen videos that Japan wanted to make real life Pikachus and they have. Nintendo wanted to take this project. For the past, I'd say seven, eight years, uh, they were extracting DNA from rabbits, hamsters, and eels. And mm -hmm. I don't know what's the rate from each, but they made an animal that looks like a Pikachu. No way. <laughs> With it, eel, it also has the uh, the, the, red, the red cheeks, yellow <laughs> yellow body, and like black ears and like a black nose, black <laughs> eyes. Five years later, uh, they have made this Pikachu, okay? The eel DNA that they extracted is because they wanted to give him zapping power, <laughs> like Pikachu. Why give- Electricity, <laughs> like real electricity. Why are you like weaponizing this shit? They, so they got this, they made this animal. Yeah. And they wanted to test it out. It looks so cute, it's like so innocent, you know? Bro, they, wallah, it looks exactly like Pikachu, bro. They brought this thing home and they wanted to test it out as a pet and a household. He was so like vulnerable, cute, you know? So One day, <laughs> these people go out, they come back home, their dog is dead. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so territorial, bro. This thing is so violent. And then people are like, if we created Pokemons and we made Pokemons real, real, yeah, <laughs> we would be doomed, bro. Yeah, I think as humans, we kind of learned that once we create anything outside of uh, what's already in our planet, there's a high chance that there might be some casualties involved. I like how they all laughed. They're like, yeah, so his dog died. <laughs> I was like, yo, y'all brave for putting that online because I know some people be mad about that. Unless you have dark humor, of course. Not yet, bestie. Also, we're playing the rake today. A real photo of the rake himself that was captured in the woods. Sit on the edge of your bed in a dark room. Rake, I offer you my... You hear the growling run. Join the log. If your dog starts acting like this, it may be warning you of an evil presence. Mm. A tattoo artist in Sydney, Austin, was woken up at 5.30 a.m. by her dog, Coda. Terror. What exactly did Coda see that caused her to act in such a way? Let me know what you- Damn, Coda was terrified. I mean, that's understandable. If your dog does end up seeing like a spirit or something, maybe they'll act like that. So if you believe that animals can see spirits, put it down in the comments and let me know your experience. Maybe you had like an experience with it. So if that's the case, let me know down in the comments because I do read my comments. So like, I'll see what you have to say. Breaking news, after more than 50 years, the woman in the box has been identified. The woman's body was found wrapped in plastic in a trunk on October 31st, 1969 in St. Petersburg, Florida. Witnesses told police they saw two men arrive in a pickup truck and place the trunk in a field before driving away. For years, detectives searched for missing persons report that matched descriptions of the victim, but they had no luck. The case went cold and she was buried under, quote, Jane Doe. In 2010, they exhumed her remains. However, they were, quote, too degraded, and again, the case went cold. But in late 2022, early 2023, they were able to get a hair strand that had not been tested. This identified the woman as Sylvia June Atherton from Arizona. They said she had five children and absolutely no ties to Florida or St. Petersburg. Detectives say she left Tucson with her children and took two of them to her ex-husband in Chicago. She was never seen by her children again. Authorities say they now know the trunk that she was found in belonged to her. They also know that she remarried and her husband never reported her missing and he passed away in 1999. They said, quote, so you can see there's some inferences here that we have to kind of fill in the gaps. Authorities say at this time, they do not know who took her life. They say this is where amateur sleuths come in and they are asking for the public's assistance and helping after being identified her daughter says she feels quote relief i'll keep you guys updated what do you think Drop not gonna lie that's actually terrifying imagine being obliterated and placed in a box never to be seen until you do get seen oh my god that'd be terrible bro r.i.p to her prayers to her 
fam. Somehow, these pictures just keep getting worse and worse for me. So this is a still that was captured on the motion camera that was stationed in Janelle Churg's living room. It is the man that police definitively believe attacked her on this night. Neil lived alone, and a lot of people live alone, a lot of people have security cameras. We all kind of have these things, right? But you can only imagine when she woke up to an alert on her phone and this was the person that she saw on her living room camera. Mm -mm. As the story goes, by the following morning, her sister had actually arrived to pick up Janelle because they were supposed to go to a farmer's market together. She found her sister's head sitting at the front door of her apartment. This man who was seen on camera was never identified in the case. It actually left a lot of people wondering, you know, if her security cameras captured this, why did her alarm never go off? I don't even know. Maybe it was a malfunction, you know, maybe like it got disarmed but that's crazy imagine you just see your freaking sister brother daughter animal mother father's head on your door shop yo that would that would that, that would tweak me out bro hell no hell no loopsy gamers has been facing some really creepy paranormal events in her home lately in this first video that i'm about to show you guys titled which shapeshifts into cat she captures something really strange on camera check this out Strange, isn't it? But it gets stranger. In another video, she's playing heads and tails with her daughter when all of a sudden this happens. No, no, no. Gina tiene novio. Varios. Tal vez. Alguien nos busca la china en día. Como por qué? Ay, Regina, la tira es que sí. La quieres aventar hasta la otra cuadra. Tal vez. Tal vez. Yo, her Kepaso meter was going off. Nah, that was, that was crazy. I don't know. The cat meowing sound kind of boofed. It's like me. Like it sounded like I. It sounded like me. Honestly, trying to make a cat now noise. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Another true crime story of how they were caught. And happy Mother's Day. Charles Neiman and his wife Devin went into a convenience store to get snacks when they were approached by a male. The man wanted to rob Charles and instead shot him twice, killing him. The wife described the attacker as a younger Hispanic male. The convenience store footage had a camera inside, though grainy. It did show some information. It showed a gray pickup truck enter the lot. A front passenger opened up the door for a back passenger. Who was the suspect? Found a black t shirt in a nearby alley and two 40 caliber shell casings. The officer noticed a square firing pin which indicated a Glock. Well, a man in Colorado heard about the crime and actually thought he encountered the suspects before the crime took place. He said he saw three men in a gas station with a Chevy truck with Louisiana plates. Police didn't have much else to go on, so they used an investigative tool called IBIS and they entered the casings into the integrated ballistic identification system. Very similar to the DNA databases in the fingerprint databases, but it's for casings and bullets. They take high definition scans of the bullets and casings, and they can use those to link to other cases, such as cold ones. Bullets and casings have unique markings that can help police identify the gun used. When police entered the casings into the database, there was no match and the case went cold. Police got a small amount of DNA from the black shirt, but it was a weak sampling and they weren't able to get a full profile. Four years later, police tried to use the IBIS system again, but this time they expanded to other states other than Oklahoma. This time they got a match to a Glock that was recovered in Denver, Colorado from a previous crime. But the man who had the gun had a solid alibi and was not a suspect in the case. This is because 
guns used in crimes, especially with gangs, travels all over. So police traced the Glock serial number and it came back to a police chief in Louisiana whose gun was stolen. Turns out a gray pickup truck was stolen that same day in Louisiana. The victim with the stolen pickup truck told police he noticed a cigarette butt in his driveway and he didn't smoke. So police collected it. They were able to get a DNA hit off of it. The DNA came back to a man named Zach Wilson. When police showed him a photo of the victim, he started crying in the fetal position and quickly confessed to the crime. He said he had gone on a multi-state crime spree with his half-brother and a friend. It was his half-brother Timothy D's turn to commit a crime. He robbed the victim freaked out and actually shot him out of panic. He said they later mm. fled to Colorado and he tried to sell the gun, but somebody else actually stole it from him. Zach and the friend got 25 and 35 years, but the half brother who shot the victim got life with the possibility of parole. Casings and a cigarette butt solved this case and that was how they were caught. Ah, uh, them motherfuckers are level one criminals, straight up. Level one. So you gonna commit a crime? You know you you weren't planning to kill the dude. Obviously the crime, the robbery went wrong. Robbery went. That's what happened to XXX Atasio, a famous artist that lived in Deerfield, Florida. Robbery gone wrong. Robbery gone wrong. You know, understandable. But if you gonna steal, start stealing stuff and doing stuff like that, bro, how you gonna put throw it a cigarette but in this man's driveway, bro? <clears throat> it's better they got caught than they didn't. But I'm just saying you could have handled that situation a little bit differently, but. Honestly, you kill someone, so that's the karma you have to pay. This man killed his daughter and then her six children or his six grandchildren. This is the 911 call made by Don Spirit after committing these murders. Just listen to this and I'll explain the whole case after. Yes, ma'am. I, I, um, I just shot my daughter and shot all my grandkids. And I'll be sitting on my step. And then when you sit here, I'm going to shoot myself. What? The address that you're at, sir. 2550 Northwest, 25 Paris, Don Spears. Third girl, every one of them are dead. Uh, you said your name is Don Spirit? Yep. All right, Don, what kind of gun do you have? It doesn't matter what kind of gun I got. They're all dead. And then when you get here, I'll shoot myself. And then you figure out what kind of gun it is. Damn. How long did this happen, Don? I, I, I don't want to hear it, man. I'm done with all every thing. Just bring them out here, that's all. You got all the kids are dead in the house. Okay, how many people? Okay, how many people? Six kids, one adult. Don Spirit was the father of Sarah Spirit, who had six children of her own. Don then murdered his daughter Sarah and his six grandchildren, including the youngest being a baby. He was very manipulative uh -uh. and abusive and he eventually just exploded. He shot all the members of the family and the baby's cause of death is still unknown to society, which is very disturbing. And the crazy thing is he already killed his son years prior, but it was ruled an accident. Bro, what's good with these grown men? Eliminating children. That to me just gets me mad because these kids are innocent. You know, their brains have no clue what the hell is going on. They're just like, oh, hi dad, pow, gone. No matter what, he's gonna either be gone in prison or dead. I wonder what happened to that guy, though. Man being haunted by werewolves, like, like every single episode, I swear to God. Just saw somebody up here, and it's a scary I'm never I've coming ever back seen, to dude. this like, theater. I'm, like, I was just down here, and I was back down there in that corner right there, and I literally just, like, can't... What the f What the f Nah, theaters can low-key get a little bit creepy, but I like theaters. I don't really go into the back part. I just go watch the movie with a bunch of people, and then boom, I'm out of there. I'm just like, oh, just go home, you know, good movie. Huh? Oh, you saw that new Barbie movie? Yeah, I saw the new Barbie movie. It was pretty fire. <laughs> Another true crime story of how they were caught. In 2008, in Columbia, Illinois, Chris Coleman and his family started receiving threatening emails and letters. Chris Coleman, an ex-Marine, did security work for a popular ministry, and the work started receiving threatening emails as well, such as, I will kill them all in their sleep. Six months mm -hmm. later, the Coleman family received a letter in the mail that was not postmarked, so it was hand-delivered, and it said things like, this is going to be your worst nightmare. Then in May 2009, Chris woke up early to go to the gym and later couldn't get a hold of his wife, so he asked his detective neighbor to check on her. At the house, the detective noticed an open window in the back and he went inside and discovered something horrific. The detective noticed red spray paint all over the walls saying things like, bitch, you are punished. He went upstairs and found Chris Coleman's wife and two children dead. An autopsy would later reveal that all three of them had been strangled. Detectives then did a 
routine background check on the husband, Chris, and found out he was having an affair with his wife's good friend. Detectives actually flew out to Florida to interview his mistress while they were still interviewing Chris Coleman about the crime, but the mistress didn't give much information. Police had collected samples of the spray paint and learned exactly what type of spray paint it was, the brand, the make. Digging into Chris's financials, they learned he'd actually purchased the same spray paint on his credit card months earlier. An autopsy had also showed that all three victims had rigor mortis, which is the stiffening of the muscles, which generally takes place around two hours after someone stops breathing. This was a red flag for detectives because Chris said he went to the gym and an hour later, all three victims were found in rigor mortis, and this conflicted with his timeline. Forensics believe the time of death to be at about three in the morning, which means Chris would have been home at the time. Then detectives did what's called a KQ analysis, where they looked at writing samples from Chris and also from the threatening messages. Detectives found out that Chris would often put the apostrophes in the wrong place and the threatening messages did the same thing. They learned Chris spelled the word opportunity wrong and he put words together such as good times instead of separating them. Police believe Chris did not want to get fired from his ministry job for committing adultery and that the only option was to kill his family so he could start a new life with his mistress. CEO of where Chris worked also said that he hadn't missed work in 11 years and called in sick the day before the murder. He was also seen on a neighbor's camera playing catch with his sons the day before the crime and had been planning this for at least six months. Police believe the mistress was not involved and she was not charged, but Chris would get life in prison and that was how he was Caught. Honestly, bro deserved life in prison. This is the fourth story. <laughs> Just hurting kid. Like, what do the kids do, bro? Like, come on, bro. Bro really wanted to end his beautiful family just to start another family with someone that's probably gonna cheat and leave him anyways. So, like, bro, what are you doing? He kept hearing noises while working in an abandoned facility, but he would soon find out going there was a mistake. A plumber named Corbin Finn was called in to fix a leak at an urgent care facility near north of Houston. Strange enough, the place has been recently abandoned for unknown reasons. As Corbin made his way down the empty halls to find the source of the leak, something hiding in the building made itself known to him. Whoever or whatever was hiding in the building rushed down the stairs towards him, but no one can be seen. Confused as to who or what could be inside this closed down facility, he investigates, and by doing so, this happens. Kind of looks like the fucking back rooms. It looks very culty. The stage up here looks like a couple of altars next to him. Creepy. Okay, now. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Man, I don't blame you. I'd get out of there too. I'm like, nah, too many sounds. This this place is too creepy, airy. I'm not messing with it. I'm just gonna leave. So I kinda don't blame him honestly. So round of applause to that guy. Have you ever heard of the Japanese urban legend of Rokurokubi? Rokurokubi is a type of yokai, a supernatural creature from Japanese folklore. They are depicted as female spirits with long necks that can stretch and contort at will. They are known for their ability to appear as normal humans during the day and transform into their true form at night. According to legend, Rokurokubi were once humans who, through various circumstances, became cursed with a supernatural ability. Some stories suggest that they were cursed by the gods as punishment for their misdeeds, while others suggest that they were cursed by evil spirits. Rokurokubi are often portrayed as seductive women who lure men to their deaths, mm. using their long necks to wrap around their victims' necks and strangle them. Other legends describe them as mischievous spirits who delight in scaring people and causing chaos. Despite their sinister reputation, not all Rokurokubi are evil. Some stories depict them as victims of their curse, longing to be freed from their supernatural affliction. Others show them as helpful spirits who aid humans in their time of need. Now nah, that's gotta be like one of the best ways to catch a male. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, male trap. A seductive, beautiful Japanese woman telling me to come in her house? I might get my neck choked down. No gap. <laughs> I'm telling you, any guy in here right now that think that he wouldn't fall for that is lying. If you're sitting with your husband, boyfriend, brother, friend, watching this right now, ask him, would you fall for that? You would, don't lie, don't lie, bro, don't lie. You know you would fall for that. The worst ways people passed away, part two. This is Hugo Abalos. In 2013, he was working his factory job just like any other day, but little did anyone know is that something would go terribly wrong. He was operating a meat blender, but suddenly he lost balance, falling face first into it, dying instantly. This photo shows a Chinese college student named Dang, just before going on a trip to the top of a mountain. 
While at the top she was taking selfies, but suddenly she lost balance, tripping over a metal railing, plummeting to her death. In 2008, a Chinese zookeeper was tending to the crocodiles as usual, but little did anyone know is that something would go horribly wrong. One of the crocodiles got a bit too close and bit him. Mm -mm. Suddenly, four more joined in. This would ultimately lead to his death. Uh, my boy got gang hit by all those crocodiles. I'm not gonna lie, I was thinking about the human meat grinder one, and it low-key had me thinking, like, if a human fell in there, obviously meat would come out, right? But like, does that mean there's a chance that some of the meat that we eat might be human meat? I don't know, maybe they shut it down or like, nah, nah, so. I'm probably wrong, honestly. What do you think? Put it down in the comments. What do you think? All right, guys, let's talk about these timeout dolls. Behind me is a timeout doll. These were used way back in the day, over 30, 40 years ago. Usually someone's grandparents would have this, and if the kid was misbehaving, they'd be like, look at the doll that's gonna be you soon. Or they would put this doll in timeout with the kid, which is even weirder. A lot of the newer generation who got the timeout dolls do not like them for obvious reasons. These things are so creepy. This is the front of the timeout doll. It literally has no face. This is even more unsettling when you consider the fact that a lot of people claim that these things would run around the house and move. Granted, a lot of kids saw this, so it might be their imagination running wild, but just the thought of that makes me uneasy. In 2020, pranks were being played on this town and these timeout dolls were just all over the place trying to scare people. Let me play that clip for you guys. It would be stealing your sleep. Dolls are just creepy in general to me. I don't like them. About a week ago, a toy meant for play started causing panic across Festus and Crystal City as one after another kept popping up and Yeah, it's a definite no from me. Let me know what you guys think about these timeout dolls in the comment section below or if you've seen it in real life. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Chief. That doll does look kind of creepy. I don't even think it has a face, dude. It kind of looked like Luffy from One Piece. If you know what One Piece is, put it down in the comments. All my anime fans in here, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. That, that, that one was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. This creepy doll is hiding a dark secret. Let's talk about a Christmas horror game where a gift turns into something much more sinister. September 7th. Full game playthrough right here. In this horror game, you play as a student who lives in an apartment complex that has seen better days. You return home one night to find that your friend Anya had left you a present, but it's a creepy looking elf doll. Well, you don't want to get rid of it because it was a gift, right? Once the doll enters the home, things start to change. Disturbing things start happening around the house and you wonder if the doll is behind it. And you notice that the doll itself starts to move. You call Anya to figure out what's going on with this present she gave you, but her response chilled me to the bone. Anya never left you a present. Fair warning, this game has some legitimately terrifying jump scares. So if that's not your thing, be warned before watching or playing. Yeah, you know, I think I'm good. I don't think I want to play the game. Megalodon is still living at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. We know that this massive beast went extinct about 3.6 million years ago, but recently a picture went viral on the internet. Researchers were studying the South Atlantic Ocean's dark bloom when they took this image from a NASA satellite near Sao Paulo. When they zoomed into it, they got this. It supposedly seems like a shark, and if we compare it to this photo of 40 feet school buses taken at the same resolution, the shark is approximately two buses in length and is said to be a 70 feet long shark can this really be the megalodon and now you know that how they know it wasn't a whale though i feel like if a whale could turn into a shark like i'm talking like the blue whale like the big blue whale like i feel like if a big blue whale could turn into a shark then they would say it's a megalodon you know what i'm saying i don't know maybe maybe the megalodon is still here who knows if you think it's still here, put it down in the comments. This is fun. If you ever smell flowers randomly in the house okay. and there's no flowers around you, that's a sign a spirit is coming to visit you. No. Check this out. So me and my mom, we were washing dishes, right? Yeah. Now our soap does not smell like flowers. Me and her, we we're like doing dishes. We we're laughing, like having a great time. And we're like, I go, you smell that? It smells like flowers. Like it smells like a garden, like a straight up <laughs> garden. And my mm. mom goes, yeah, what's that smell? My mom's face goes like this. I'm like, what, what, what? She goes, they say when you smell flowers, it's someone that passed. Yeah, like a there. relative to you or random? It has something to do with, you know how at a funeral, mm -hmm. what do you give the body? Flowers. Give the body flowers. Yeah. That's the last thing that they're with. And my mom, right away, she went and called my Lola. And she's like, what, what, is, the, what is the death anniversary of 
of Lolo. Like, yeah, what is the death yeah. anniversary? Yo, that's crazy. If you ever smelt flowers while doing anything, put it down in the comments. That's actually really cool. I'm not going to lie. RIP to everyone that has died in the last 1,000 plus years. May their souls rest in peace. My uncle, John Kennedy, he realized early on that the purpose of the CIA and the intelligence apparatus was to create a constant pipeline of new wars. Eisenhower, who was the outgoing president, gave what is probably the most important speech in American history, which was, you know, where he warned against the military industrial complex. I was at my uncle's inauguration. I was in Washington that day, you know, as a six-year-old boy. And two months later, the military and intelligence came to him and said, we got to invade Cuba. And he was like, I'm not going to Cuba and I'm not going to let the military. And they said, well, we got all these Cubans trained and they're going to go attack Castro. And he said, well, we're, the U.S. government can't be doing that. I don't like what Castro is doing down there, but the, it's not the United States job to dictate what kind of governments other countries have. And they said, uh, well, as soon as they land, there's going to be a, a big revolution. Everybody's going to rise up and they're going to overthrow Castro. And he said, well, you can't use the U.S. military. And they ended up bringing those guys over. And in the middle of it, in the night, they came to him and said, they're getting wiped out on the beach and you need to send in the military and invade. And he said, we're not going to do it. He stepped out of that meeting and he realized they had been lying to him and trying to trick him. And he said, I want to take the CIA and shatter it into a thousand mm. pieces and scatter it to the winds. For the next a thousand days of his presidency, he was at war with his military and intelligence apparatus. They tried to get him to go into Laos. He said, no. They tried to get him to go into Vietnam. They said well, that we need 250,000 combat troops. He refused. Everybody around him wanted him to go into Vietnam. He sent 16,000 military advisors. They weren't allowed to fight. And many of them did. They both violated the rules of engagement. In October of 1963, he heard some of his Green Berets had been killed over there. And he said, I want a total casualty list from Vietnam. And his aide came to him and said, 75 Americans have died. And he said, that's too many. And he signed that day a national security order ordering all troops out of Vietnam, U.S. troops. And then a, week, a month later, he was killed. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's a lot of conspiracies around JFK. Those are honestly some of my favorite conspiracies. But damn, it looks like he was kind of like hands off as a president. He wasn't so involved in world politics compared to like his actual country. What do you think? Do you think that the CIA killed JFK? Or do you think that it was just a random assassination by the by Lee Harvey Oswald, as they claim? These are creepy the TikToks that will make you rethink invented? your whole a mess reality. Fact about history I bet you didn't know. At a time where C-sections really weren't viable if you couldn't give birth in a natural way and they just really weren't a safe practice yet, two men decided to invent this monstrosity. That's right, the original chainsaw was invented for childbirth. Doctors would spin that little hand crank and they would literally saw into the pelvic bones of women to help them give birth. And this was actually seen as much safer than a C-section at the time. <laughs> Yeah, it did. It moved. It moved. It moved. Yes, it did. It did. How do you not see that? Okay. I don't know. I've been face down in a ditch for two hours. I was trying to save your buddy. Okay. I don't think there's much left I have to prove. Okay. Well, if you can come back, I don't... that'd be nice. Okay. I don't know where this thing is or when it's gonna. Oh, shit. I'm back, it's your boy F-I-T-T-I -T -T to the E, and today we're looking at this accomplished together, so make sure to grab your water, your popcorn, your fruit snacks, whatever you want. Just remember to subscribe and like the video so you can get pushed to way more people. But it says that majority of you watching aren't subscribed. If you can subscribe, that would be amazing. See if I can get my goal of 10,000 subscribers right now. And if you're watching, might as well subscribe because this is going to be a long series and I'm going to make multiple different series. And honestly, you just want to stick around and enjoy the ride, honestly. Pictures humans were never meant to see and you're about to find out why. So the pictures I'm about to show you are pictures of giants that got apparently leaked and uh, could be proof leaked. that giants actually existed. Up first is a picture of a giant standing next to a couple. At first glance, you're going to think this photo is fake or completely AI. But many people who work at certain government-run museums have came out and said that you would be completely shocked by what's in there. They sign agreements saying they can't talk about anything that they see. Next is a photo of a giant just walking around in a field. Now, I can see why people would just assume this is fake right off the bat, but let's actually just think about it for a second. What if these photos are 100% real and giants existed? 
Many reporters have said these photos come from a country called Terrakina, and these giant-like creatures are actually our friends. And they were completely wiped out and erased from the history books. Giants being real, those kind of look like this giant from this game called Skyrim. I don't know, man. The giant one is iffy, but at the end of the day, you got to be open-minded. For all I know, giants could have been real and they just decided not to talk about them. I don't know. Her granddaughter tried to warn her something evil was with them. A little girl was with her grandmother one day when she noticed something in the living room and was watching them from across the dining room. He's right in front of you? Yeah. Who is it? Who's there, mister? What are you doing in our, where's he at, dining room? Yeah. Show me him, go show me him. Give me your hand, take me to him. Yes. Take me to him, show me. As the grandmother asks her to take her to the man, she points at him while keeping her distance. Yeah. What are you doing in our dining room, mister? What does he look like? Uh, I bug. He's got bug eyes? Yeah. The little girl describes seeing a man with bug-like eyes that the grandmother can't see. What are you doing in our living room, mister? Get. Get. You, go, you go back home. You go back wherever you came from. What did he, what's he doing? Come on, you're creeping me out. We're going upstairs. Finally, the grandmother's had enough and leaves the area. Is it possible that the family was visited by the Lord of Flies himself as described in historical drawings? Yeah, I don't know. If my opinion, I've been seeing a lot of videos where babies been seeing ghosts. So for all I know, it could have been him. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that they saw that creature? Put it down in the comments. Do you know why the chainsaw was originally invented? Here's a messed up fact about history I bet you didn't know. At a time where C-sections really weren't viable if you couldn't give birth in a natural way, and they just really weren't a safe practice yet, two men decided to invent this monstrosity. That's right. The original chainsaw was invented for childbirth. Doctors would spin that little hand crank and they would literally saw into the pelvic bones of women to help them give birth. And this was actually seen as much safer than a C-section at the time. For all my female followers, I'm just gonna let that one sink in. That is a huge no for me. And chainsaws weren't even used for wood cutting until 100 years later. Not in a thousand years. Oh no! Bro, I'm a guy and I'm looking at that like, nah, nah, <laughs> I'm good. If you're a lady watching this, what do you think about that? Like, what? An uninvited visitor, a sweet, suffocating odor, victims left paralyzed. This was the terror that unfolded in Mattoon, Illinois in the summer of 1944. The midnight horror began on August 31st. Urban Rafe, roused from his sleep by a peculiar order, found himself weakening, the world spinning. His wife attempted to investigate, suspecting natural gas poisoning, but she too found herself immobilized, paralyzed in her own bed. Just a stone's throw away, the very next day, a young mother was awakened by her daughter's coughing. She tried to rush to her child, but she too was locked in paralysis. With a dozen more attacks, all marked by the strange, sweet odor and ensuing paralysis, the town was rattled. While robbery was a plausible explanation, no evidence of forced entry or permanent harm was found. The string of attacks drew FBI attention, resulting in detailed investigation with local police. As abruptly as the attacks started, they stopped, leaving police baffled. They were unable to determine the chemical used, identify a suspect, or determine a motive. To this day, the mystery of the mad gasser of Mattoon remains unsolved. That just kind of unlocked a hidden fear because I was really thinking about it. I was like, bro, imagine like you're just chilling, you know, sleeping and shit. Just woke up early morning, 6 a.m. And then next thing you know, just <coughs> some motherfucker gassed you? Yo, he must have really hated you to do that, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, like you were his, his, his arch nemesis, bro. We're gonna talk about a forgotten horror movie today because I'm appalled. I never see anyone find this movie for the first time and make a review. I never see anyone recommend it. I never see it talked about. And I did not even remember the name of this movie. I remembered a specific scene, Googled it, and the name popped up. And I was like, I don't remember it being called that. But we're gonna talk about it because no one else does. And we're talking about the 2017 film, The Hatred. Now I know what you're probably thinking. I don't remember that movie at all. Noth nothing of that looks familiar. Let me set the scene of that scene. You're in a movie theater about to watch whatever came out in 2017, or you're at home just flipping through your TV and a commercial comes on. A woman walks into a little girl's room. The little girl's on the bed and she's like, I need you to check under my bed, something is wrong. 
So the woman does, and the little girl's under the bed going, that's not me. That's this movie. That, that was this movie. I don't know why that is the only scene that I can remember from this movie, but I'm gonna go rewatch it and I'm gonna stitch this and tell you if it lives up to the hype that it has in my head. But I Googled it to read you guys the actual description of it and 11% I can't vouch for the rest of the movie, I literally don't remember, but that scene alone deserves a crisp, like, 60. Yeah, she just full on explained that scene, but I'm still highly confused at what that movie is. I don't know, if you've seen it, put it down in the comments. I don't think I've ever seen it. Scary Videos Part 6. A man is watching a commercial when something seems to be watching him. Why is this on the TV? Oh. Keep watching. Pay attention. What the what? fuck is that? What the f is that? Before we get to the next one, can you hit that heart button? I'll do part seven if we get to 50,000 hearts. What pushed this baby? Mom? Yes, mom. Damn. <laughs> Would you rather travel to the past or the future and why? I'm never going swimming after this. Honestly, I don't know why bro jumped off of that like that and I don't know what risk he was taking But he took a risk because now he might be in the grave But hey, we have footage so I don't think he's in the grave But I'm not gonna lie whatever pushed that baby in that one clip that it definitely had it out for that child I'm not gonna lie Doctors working midnight shift yet horrified after they capture the unexpected on the abandoned floor <laughs> Honestly, I don't blame him. I'd have ran too. But the real question is, why are you snooping around in the hospital like you don't work there? That's really how you get fired. You see him and the nurse just like, oh shoot, it's spook in this hospital. Come on, bro. You know that's how you get fired. Creepiest thing about you, according to your zodiac sign. If you are an Aries, you are obsessed with death. It turns out that aside from being one of the four zodiac signs related to birth, Aries is also one of the three death signs. Aries represents death through fire. So Aries, if you spend a lot of time thinking about your demise, the deaths of others, or the death of a planet, know that this is completely normal for you. The good news, that the underlying meaning of death by fire, Aries is ultimately a sign of purification. If you can't stop thinking about death, perhaps it's time to seek out some purifying practices like yoga, and meditation uh that one was kind of weird if you're an aries do you think about that all the time but let me know down in the comments if you're an aries this video gives me the chills watch the video and then let me know if you think this guy's apartment is haunted the craziest shit i've seen so far i was taking the trash out with my son and he kept pointing at the mirror and waving and i didn't know why so i pulled the camera out and i can't believe i caught this that's rowan mm. Like, did anyone else see that skull thing or like another child in the mirror? I don't know what- I saw that instantly. As soon as he did, I was like, whoa, what is that? Nah, that, that was that was creepy, not gonna lie. What is the scariest thing that could happen while camping? Well, this one guy who was camping in Florida had a horrifying encounter. 
And before we get into it, I have a podcast episode of two of the scariest camping stories I've ever heard if you're interested. So years ago, a guy and his friend were camping in Florida when they came upon this old man's campground. It was in disarray, so they kind of got a bad feeling from it and they turned to leave. But then the guy comes out of the campsite and is like, oh, hey, you know, he wants to talk to them. He starts engaging them. He's giving them suggestions of where to go in the woods, but he's telling them where to go in steps, not in miles or yards. So he's like, oh, the waterfall is 300 steps from here. And one of the guys thinks that's weird because that's really not common in the area to describe where to go. A few months pass and they basically just forget about this interaction. But one day, one of the guys calls the other guy and is like, dude, you have to turn on the TV right now. And all over the news are pictures of this guy, the guy they saw, Gary Michael Hilton, who is a serial killer who preyed upon young women in national parks, kidnapping them and taking their lives. Some of the places he told the boys to go look at were places he had hid bodies. Yo, those people that he told to take 800 steps, those were so lucky people. He could have done the same thing to them. I'm not going to lie. Saying to someone, yeah, if you just take 800 steps that way, I feel like it's looking a little bit more accurate than uh, two miles down the road, 10 miles down the road. You don't know how far two ten miles is. Creepy TikToks that will keep you awake at night. So I'm babysitting, right? And it's 10.30 at night now. I've already put the kids in bed, and I hear laughing. I started to get a little mad because this was the third time I told them they needed to be in bed since they have school in the morning. The thing is, the noises were coming from the baby's room. I thought maybe they woke up to check on their sister. So then I decide to check the baby monitor. Please tell me what's in the top left corner. I don't know. I've been face down in a ditch for two hours. I was trying to see oh. the pony, okay? I don't think there's much left I have to prove. Okay, well, if you can come back, that'd be nice. Okay, I don't know where this thing is. Or when it's gonna... oh. <laughs> if I'm with one of the homies and something like that happened, bro, best believe I'm bringing out the blick, bro. We going in there, all right, bro. We're gonna hunt for homie. We're gonna go in there like we're special agents. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have like the AR over the shoulder, just like okay, ten four. We got him over here. <laughs> Save the homie, you know. Come back like yeah. <laughs> She was looking kind of creepy, bro. She was looking devilish. I would be scared of her. Oh my. Five horror movies that were banned in different countries for whatever reason. Some valid, some kind of, I don't know. The Human Centipede 2 was banned in Australia. The reason for the ban was that it was just too inappropriate. That's pretty much it. 1978's I Spit in Your Grave was banned in Australia, Germany, Iceland, and Canada. Now, while others see this movie as a sign of justice, other countries was like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> don't don't bring that over here. The Hunger from 1983 was banned in Chile or Chile or however you pronounce that country. My, my bad. Because the movie involved the dark arts and the consumption of blood, the country said, no, don't bring that over here. Mm-hmm. Hostel Part 2 was banned in Germany. By the way, Germany has the longest list of banned horror movies, which is crazy because Germany doesn't have that clean of a history. So I guess they try to clean it up through the horror movies that they get rid of. They deemed the Hostel Part 2 was just way too disturbing. More specifically, the director's cut that just showed everything. And lastly, probably the most hilarious ban on this list is World War Z that got banned in China. And the reason is something that you'll never expect. So in 1997, Brad Pitt was in a movie called Seven Years in Tibet. And in the movie, it featured Chinese soldiers being depicted as evil villains. Not liking how the soldiers were portrayed in the movie, the Chinese government saw Brad Pitt making another movie and said, yeah, <laughs> fuck that guy. Everybody involved with Seven Years in Tibet pretty much got the middle finger when it came down to any other movies going to China. In 2013, when World War Z came out, China said, no. Don't bring that over here. There y'all go, man. Five horror movies that got banned in other countries. That's hilarious. World War Z, that wasn't even like too crazy. I mean, there's zombies in it, but yeah, it's like what he said. They just banned it because Brad Pitt made them look like evil soldiers, I guess. My boy in a war with a werewolf. Oh my God. Oh, he coming. Let's talk about one of the scariest sounds ever posted. The Siberian hellhole. Now this sound went viral because of how terrifying it sounds, and I'm gonna show it to you, so Uh. Now the story seems to have been started by these guys. Christianity Today, 
It was on a July 16th, 1990 article of theirs. But the story goes that apparently a hole was drilled in Russia and it was so deep that it reached hell. Hence the Siberian hell hole. And I'm pretty sure that's not a picture of it. Now the question is, is there a creepypasta inspired by a Christianity Today 1990 article? Or is this really what hell sounds like? Either way, it's really scary and I'm gonna show it to you. Here it is. Uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very I'm disturbing I'm kinda terrified, indeed. so be careful. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why they say that's a hole to hell. It sounds like a bunch of people screaming, bro. That's why you should repent and trust in God. Ding! A boat went missing in rough seas off the coast of Hawaii and was found years later, half an ocean away. In 1979, 27-year-old Robert Malayakin and four friends from East Maui went fishing in a small boat called Sarah Joe. As the day progressed, rough seas, stirred by gale force winds, overwhelmed them. Despite the Coast Guard's extensive search among 40-foot waves, the Sarah Joe remained missing, prompting a community mourning. Ten years later, marine biologist John Naughton discovered the remains of the Sarah Joe on the shoreline of the Marshall Islands. A member of the initial search party, he was shocked to find the wreckage over 2,200 miles away from its last known location. Near the wreckage, he found a crude grave containing the remains of John Mormon, one of the lost friends. The grave was marked with a driftwood cross, stones, and foil interleaved paper. The fate of the remaining four men and the creator of John Mormon's grave remain a mystery. The recovered Sarah Jo now rests in Robert's brother's driveway in Maui, a reminder of that fateful trip. How did the boat and John Mormon end up 2,200 miles away? Who buried him? What happened to the other four men? Nah, that's crazy. Honestly, bro, I have no clue how it happened, but it happened. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And we know you've been disrespecting your mother. How's that? What did he say? If you don't stop misbehaving, we're gonna take your mom away and leave you here. He said, Thomas, if you don't stop misbehaving, bro, Thomas just full on <laughs> and they're talking. If you don't behave, we're gonna take. There are 50 women on death row in the United States, and this is one of their stories. Donna Roberts was found guilty of convincing one of her lovers to murder her husband. Mm. Donna Roberts was married to Robert Fingerhut, and she ran the restaurant that was inside the bus station that he ran. Donna used this restaurant to find simps to sleep with. She regularly hit on the patrons and even the employees. She said she and Robert had an open relationship, but she's the only one here to verify that. On December 11th, 2001, 911 received a frantic call from Donna. She'd come home to find her husband's body on the kitchen floor. He'd been shot several times and his Chrysler was missing, but that was the only valuable missing from the house. So police knew it wasn't a robbery. Donna said that a man named Santiago had likely taken Robert out after meeting him at the bus station. Police tracked this man down and he admitted to having an affair with Donna, but said she became super toxic. Several days before her husband's death, Donna tracked Santiago down at his workplace and yelled at him in front of his boss, accusing him of stealing from her. It came to light that Donna had several lovers and hundreds of letters from a former inmate of the local jail, and he'd gotten released right before Robert's death. This man was named Nate Johnson, and he was in love with the older woman. They were seeing each other, but switched to letters and phone calls after he had to serve a stint at the local jail. And the duo would talk a lot about taking care of a package. So obviously her husband. Donna invited Nate to her house and also bought him the used to shoot her husband. The police mm -hmm. then stormed on his house in the middle of the night and her son said it was quote like she was Saddam Hussein. Donna Roberts and Nate Jackson were both tried and given the death penalty. And Donna had actually asked for the death penalty because then she could be on death row and be away from all the other inmates and have an entire area to herself. Donna is currently the only female inmate on death row in Ohio. But as of 2020, all executions are on pause. I don't know if that means her plan failed and she's back in the regular prison with all the other inmates or if her execution will ever get carried out before she dies of some other related thing. Bro, you just got out of prison just to go right back? Are you dumb? And the fact that she also asked to be put on death row is also a little bit questioning, but 
to each their own. Did this woman chop her husband up and dump him in a suitcase? Melanie Maguire married Bill in 1999. They had two sons together and from the outside it looked like they had a really good relationship. However, behind closed doors, things were not good. Melanie claimed that Bill had a gambling problem and a temper. One night in 2004, Melanie claims that Bill pushed her against a wall in an argument and hit her. She then stated that he tried to choke her. The next day, Bill was missing. Melanie contacted a divorce attorney and also filed for a restraining order. On May the 5th, 2004, some fishermen discovered a suitcase in Chesapeake Bay. Inside, they made a horrific discovery. Inside was a man's dismembered legs. Over the next week or two, more suitcases were found. These contained a torso, oh. a head, thighs, and a pelvis. It was found that the person had been shot to death. When the man was identified as Bill Maguire, Melanie said that she burst into tears. Interestingly, police found that Melanie had bought a gun two days before Bill's disappearance. They also found out she was having an affair. Police then discovered Bill's vehicle in Atlantic City. Melanie claims that she'd moved the vehicle as a prank. She said that he was out at a casino and she was sick of him gambling, so she moved the car. However, police found on Melanie's computer that she'd Googled how to purchase guns illegally. Mm -hmm. She also searched how to commit murder and undetectable poisons. Rubbish bags in her house also matched the rubbish bags that Bill was wrapped in. Melanie was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, but she maintained she was not the killer. She suggested that her husband may have been killed over gambling debts. She claims that Bill had told her to buy a gun to protect herself. Okay, that's cool. But like, are we not going to talk about how you try to search up how to buy guns illegally? How to get away with poisoning someone undetectably? Like these all kind of lead up into creating a case against you. So I guess she's a little bit slow or something. This woman died 11 days after getting killer. married. killer. Some people think it was an accident. Others think it was murder. Have you ever heard of Tina Watson? Mm. Tina and Gabe got married on October 11th of 2003. Shortly before their wedding, Gabe took out a life insurance policy on Tina that was the company's max amount. Damn. And he was the beneficiary. After they got married in Alabama, Gabe and Tina decided to go honeymoon in Australia. And while they were there, they were planning on diving. Gabe was an experienced diver. He was a rescue diver. So this was not something that he was nervous to do. Tina had dived a couple of times, but only in uh, pools and never in open water. On October 22nd of 2003, Gabe and Tina had planned to dive down to the ship shipwreck SS Yolanga. This was a steamer that sank all the way back in 1911, and it was a pretty popular dive, but it was also recommended for only experienced divers to go on this. Gabe said that he and Yolanda had planned to go down on one line and kind of uh, skim across the top of the shipwreck and then grab another anchor line and go back to the surface. But as soon as they were in the water, the current overtook them and things got very difficult very quickly. Gabe said that Tina had motion saying that she wanted to go back to the surface. Gabe and Tina were both trying to swim back to where they had come from, but because of the current, they weren't able to make much progress. That's when Gabe motioned Tina to fill up her buoyancy compensator, and this was supposed to make her go back up to the surface. Hmm. Gabe says that nothing happened with the inflator hose, and that's when he grabbed Tina and started making his way back to the anchor rope. Gabe says that then he all of a sudden felt a whack across his face and his mask came undone. Oh. He said that Tina had accidentally hit him in the face and this is why his mask had come undone. And by the time he was finally able to readjust and get everything back to where it was, he looked down and Tina was 10 feet below him. <sighs> Gabe said that she was sinking with her arms up like she was trying to reach for him. Gabe did say that he tried to reach for Tina, but soon realized he would not be able to. So that's when he swam back up to the surface to try to get some help. Damn. Dive instructors then jumped in to get Tina. And then when they brought her back, they tried to resuscitate her for 45 minutes, but she was sadly gone. At first, it looked like a tragic accident, and the medical examiner would determine that this was an accidental drowning caused by an air embolism. But it wasn't until police started talking to Gabe that they grew Twist? pretty suspicious because he was acting suspicious. We'll go into everything in part two, and that'll be up as soon as I'm done filming. So just give me a couple of minutes. Here is part two to the case of Tina Watson. 
When investigators started looking into Gabe, they realized some strange things. Like while they were attempting to resuscitate Tina, Gabe was in another boat and he didn't seem frantic to get back to Tina at all. During the first part of the dive, Gabe said that his watch had malfunctioned. He and Tina had to resurface in order to fix Gabe's watch. He said that the battery was inserted wrong, so it wasn't working. Gabe did not want people to look at this watch, and when investigators were finally able to, they were able to find that this watch had never malfunctioned. The battery was never put in wrong. So police assume that Gabe was just trying to find a way to separate himself and Tina from the group. They also hired a diver that was the same height and weight as Tina to sink to the bottom like Tina would have in the same location that Gabe said this happened. Every time this diver sunk to the bottom, she landed on the SS Yolonga's deck. And in this photo, you can see Tina at the bottom of the ocean floor. She is nowhere near the deck of the SS Yolonga. Other divers also claim to see Tina and Gabe in what they called a bear hug. Investigators believe that Gabe was holding Tina and uh, turning off her oxygen until she had passed, and then he made a leisurely swim back up to the surface. It took him almost two minutes to resurface. On top of that, other divers say that uh, when a diver is sinking, you will never see them looking up at the sky with their arms up. You will see them flailing, trying to fix their equipment. Gabe was charged in Australia, and there he pleaded guilty to manslaughter. A judge sentenced him to four years, and he spent 18 months in prison there. When he was released, he came back and remarried, but he was also charged in the United States because they thought they had jurisdiction since he planned it in Alabama. But he was acquitted of all charges in Alabama. Tina's father said that her grave was often vandalized with people taking the flowers that they left for her. It even got to the point where they had to chain the flowers that they bought for Tina to her grave. Surveillance footage would show later that Gabe was the one taking the flowers from Tina's grave. So here's my question. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think Gabe's guilty? Personally, I do. But let me know your- th My thoughts on that is that Gabe is a weirdo. Straight up. Yo, he really planned it out so perfectly. You would have thought it was real. Cause I was like, yo, she really got clapped like that. But not, nah, it was just him. And then he still got caught. Hey y'all, let's talk about three ghost towns in America. Number one, Centralia, Pennsylvania. In Columbia County, Pennsylvania, lies a town called Centralia. In 1962, a fire occurred inside of a coal mine. The government spent millions of dollars to get rid of the fire, but each attempt failed. Over 60 years later, the underground coal mine still burns to this day. What was once a population of over 2,000 is now a population of four. Few buildings remain and the streets of Centralia are damaged with graffiti and potholes. In fact, this town inspired the horror movie, Silent Hill. Number two, Catalucci Valley, North Carolina. In the Great Smoky Mountains area of North Carolina is a ghost town called Catalucci. In the 20th century, the residents were forced to move because the plan was to turn the area into a national park. What was once a population of over a thousand is now a population of zero. Although no one lives here, many people still go here to go hiking and to just enjoy its beautiful mountains and wildlife. Last but not least, number three, St. Elmo, Colorado. St. Elmo, Colorado is a ghost town known for its paranormal activity. There in the 1910s, the mining industry declined and in 1958, the town went completely ghost. Currently, there are some buildings that are still there, including a privately owned hotel. However, if you stay at this hotel, you might see some unwanted guests, aka the ghost. All right, y'all, that's it, and I'll be back to do more videos for you guys. Would you go to any of those areas? Put it down in the comments. Me personally, hell no. Unless I was doing a vlog, of course. If I'm doing a vlog for YouTube, I'll go anywhere. Get it on camera, y'all gonna see it crazy. So when I start vlogging, don't be surprised if you see me in crazy places like that. Let's talk about a disturbing boss fight from the game Fear and Hunger. Traces of Grogoroth.
Grogoroth is an old god in Fear and Hunger's lore. What you see here and what you fight in the game is a shell of its former self, which is why it's called Traces of Grogoroth. Speaking of which, in the game's lore, Grogoroth is the god of human sacrifice, and you can even ally yourself with him instead of fighting him by sacrificing party members throughout the game. And most of the glass cannon spells and blood magic in the game all came from this guy. If you choose to have Grogoroth as your final boss during your playthrough of the game, it's important to note that even though this is a weakened version of the boss lore-wise, he's still really strong. And one of my favorite things about the boss's visual design itself is it just seems like eyes are popping up out of nowhere and contorting the boss's features. It's really twisted. Now, that looks like a cool game. I really... I never really played that, but I mean, maybe if I get back into gaming, I might play it. It looks kind of cool. We went to explore an abandoned village. They would soon realize going there was a mistake. Gashan and Yasuke from the paranormal team The Clip Store went to explore a ghost town in Japan after receiving a call about a man who visited the village. The man believes he interacted with a strange elderly couple, even though the place has now been abandoned for over 10 years. As Yasuke explores one of the abandoned houses, it's not until they return home and look over the footage that they would realize they were never alone. <laughs> What looks like a pale woman's head can be seen underneath it. Could this really be the spirit of a resident trapped in this village from whatever travesty occurred during the past? Let me know what you think. Yeah, I would. I just wouldn't know what. <laughs> Honestly. Here are my top do not watch movies because they were so disturbing that I wanted to stop watching. <laughs> Number one, Incident in Ghostland. A sweet movie about two daughters reuniting with their mom at a house where a really traumatic event happened. Get ready to get depressed and disappointed several times. This movie is gonna gaslight you a ton of times. Number two, Skins. This movie went viral because of the girl that has her you know what in her mouth, mm. but it's described as a movie with deformed characters who must deal with society shunning their appearance. Now I do want to say that I loved the message, but it's not the characters themselves that disturb me, it's what happens to them. They're horribly mistreated, essayed, and abused. So I... I wanted to stop watching within the first 10 minutes. And if you watch it, you'll know why. I mean, she, you said don't watch it, so I'm not watching it. <laughs> Straight up, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't, you said don't watch it, so why would I watch it? You imagine, you open your attic door and you find this terrifying doll. Pay close attention. Honestly, that would be scary as hell if that did not look like someone's Halloween costume. Anyways, if you like the video, please like the video. Your boy is pushing over 6K subs. Love y'all. Peace out.